Before meeting Crown Prince Frederick of Denmark at the 2000 Sydney Olympics, Australian advertising executive Mary Donaldson stopped at the counter of a tarot card reader at a local flea market, Donaldson agreed to a reading, and the fortune teller placed the cards in a traditional pattern on her desk and began turning them over. The 28-year-old was told she would leave the business where she had recently worked to meet a man from overseas. She would become famous, the clairvoyant said, moving to live in Europe. So I left there and thought, well, yes, it was a lot of fun, but nothing more than that, the former Ms. Donaldson, now Crown Princess Mary of Denmark, told Jens Andersen, author of the official 2017 biography of her husband the prince. Frederick, under the bar. But I've always been interested in the spiritual, said Mary, now a TC, according to Danish newspaper Crystal Dagblad. In Mystery and Destiny Soon after, on September 16, 2000, Donaldson, who worked for luxury real estate company Bell Property, was spending the evening with her roommate Andrew Miles and friend Beatrice Tarnowski at Sydney's Slip in Restaurant and Bar. The Olympics were in full swing and the city was overflowing with foreign visitors. Frederick was one of them. According to Royal Central, he was at the slip-in with his brother Prince Joachim, cousin Prince Nikolaus of Greece and Princess Martha Louise of Norway. They met with Prince Felipe of Spain, who knew Donaldson's roommate's sister. Donaldson reportedly began arguing with Tarnowski about whether a man with a hairy chest was more attractive. Frederick, Joachim and Nikolaus offered to be guinea pigs. The ice broke, Donaldson and Frederick talked all night, but it wasn't until later that Mary realized her new friend, who introduced himself simply as Fred, was a member of the royal family. The first time we met, we shook hands, she told Anderson of their acquaintance. I didn't know he was the Prince of Denmark. After half an hour, someone came up to me and said, Do you know who these people are? At the end of the night, Donaldson gave Frederick her phone number, and he called her the next day. The prince later said he felt she was his soulmate when they met, but although Mary told Andrew Denton's enough rope in 2005 that something clicked, she added, it wasn't fireworks in the sky or anything like that, but there was a sense of excitement. The couple's relationship blossomed through long-distance phone calls, emails and letters, as well as the duo's careful flights back and forth between Denmark and Australia, where they even won the Melbourne Cup in 2002. According to a 2003 Sun-Herald report, early in the relationship, Mary hired Sydney-style consultant Teresa Page to transform her. She paid $1,195 for the six-week course to boost her confidence and social standing, the newspaper reported. In November 2001, the Danish weekly Bill Bladet named Donaldson, who was working as an English tutor in Paris at the time, as the prince's girlfriend. The following month, when the cover-up was blown, she moved to Copenhagen to live while also working at Microsoft and giving Danish language lessons. The couple first appeared in public together when, with Mary in baggy jeans and Frederick in shorts showing off a leg tattoo, they posed for photos before his participation in a yacht race in Hobart in January 2003. The Danish press was fascinated by the athletic brunette commoner who was to become part of their royal family. Mary's origins were humble, the youngest of four children of Henrietta executive assistant and math professor John Donaldson, she grew up in Hobart, Tasmania. She graduated from the local university in 1995 with a degree in commerce and law and began her career working for advertising agencies in Melbourne and Sydney. While her professional life was gaining momentum, Donaldson experienced personal grief when her mother died in 1997. Four years later, her father married British author Susan Horwood. The next bride in the family was Maria. Armed with an emerald-cut diamond ring and two emerald-cut ruby baguettes, Frederick proposed to her during a trip to Italy. We decided we wanted to go to Rome, just to see Rome, the prince later said. And I had never been to Rome before. I thought, this is the moment. Catch the moment and, get your knee pads, N.A. Suddenly, in one of Rome's lovely neighborhoods, I had to say, this is it, Mary. The engagement was announced on October 8, 2003. Mary's new bride joked about her engagement, I wasn't allowed to say no. The couple wed on May 14, 2004, 
in Copenhagen Cathedral. The bride, by then a Danish citizen and a converted Lutheran, entered to handle Sadok priest. She wore an ivory duchess-colored satin gown by the Danish designer of Frank. The skirt consisted of satin inserts that opened from the hip, revealing nearly eight meters of Irish lace underneath, and a detachable six-meter satin train. Maria's veil has been worn by nearly every Danish royal bride since 1905, and was held by a tiara given to the bride by Queen Margrethe and Prince Henrik. Her custom-made earrings were set with brilliant-cut diamonds and South Seas pearls, and as a tribute to her late mother, Henriette's engagement ring was sewn into the bodice of her dress, next to her heart. Expecting his bride, the prince wept and was excited during the ceremony. In his sermon, Bishop Eric Norman Svensson of Copenhagen told Mary and Frederick to rejoice that you have found each other, adding that the royal couple belongs not only to each other, but to all of us. Said Frederick at the altar, from today, Mary is mine and I am hers. I love her and will protect her with all my love. After the service, to the applause of hundreds of thousands of well-wishers, the radiant couple rode in an open horse-drawn carriage from the cathedral to Amalienborg Palace, where they appeared on the balcony before the reception. The wedding banquet featured a menu of clam timble, roasted venison and white chocolate delicacies. As the four hundred guests sat down, Queen Margrethe thanked her new daughter-in-law for inspiring her son to find his true self. But she added, this is the season of flowers. But it won't always be summer. Frederick said he has been dazzled and totally dependent on Mary's radiance since they first met. I love you, Mary. Let's go, let's go. Come, let's go and see. In a thousand worlds weightless love awaits. The 90 kilograms wedding cake, topped with cartoon figures of the couple, was two meters high and consisted of ten tiers of almonds and chocolate covered with white marzipan, with pink roses and the couple's chocolate monogram. Some with almonds and some with chocolate. After it was cut, shortly before midnight, Maria and Frederick led their guests into the dome hall of the palace for a traditional wedding waltz. That same night, they set off on their honeymoon to Africa. She didn't know where we were going, and I wanted to go somewhere where we could, be ourselves, literally, just the two of us, Frederick told ABC in 2005. That northern summer, the newlyweds attended the 2004 Summer Olympics in Athens, nearly four years after they first met at the Sydney Games. The following year, on October 15, they had their first child, Prince Christian, followed by Princess Isabella on April 21. 2007, and twins Prince Vincent and Princess Josephine, born on January 8, 2011. Mary and Frederick and their family can often be seen bicycling through the streets of Copenhagen on their way to the children's public schools, and they also go skiing and horseback riding together. Their home at Amalienborg Palace is more of a big house, Mary told Enough Rope. It's not very luxurious. It's warmer and cozier this way. The princess is now on international lists of the most stylish people, and ten years ago she founded the Mary Foundation to combat social isolation. In December 2017, Mary told the Women's Weekly that she hopes she can teach compassion to her family as well as the wider community. We feel that as part of our role as parents, we have a responsibility to raise our children to be open-minded and tolerant. Adults, she said. Empathy is what brings our world together. That empathy was on display February 20th at Prince Henrik's private funeral. Mary wiped away tears as her father-in-law was forgiven after he passed away in his sleep February 13th at the age of 83. Dressed in black with a double string of pearls, she drew her distraught daughter Josephine to her side to embrace her, stroking the little girl's face. The prince's death sparked rumors that 77-year-old Queen Margrethe might abdicate in favor of her son, making Mary the first queen of Australian descent. Her royal destiny was not what she expected, Mary said shortly after her engagement, I don't remember wanting to be a princess one day. I wanted to be a veterinarian.